Hey everyone, and welcome to Cohen's Garage. This video covers identifying a fuel leak down issue on my 1991 Nissan 240SX. I parked the car shortly after getting the solstice due to finding excess fuel in the car's oil. This problem can be caused by a few things, such as injector failure, injector o-ring failure, or seals. Uh, it could be an ignition system problem, or even something as severe as a low compression cylinder causing a lack of combustion. The first thing I want to look at is the actual fuel injection system itself. This engine uses side feed injectors and these are all stock OEM parts. I have personally replaced the injectors on this engine at least three times already due to various failures. They are extremely prone to failure and overall side feed injectors are pretty problematic. They work fine when they're working but when they fail, they do put your engine at an increased risk. So here I am just removing the fuel injection system wiring harness, which is bruised and battered. There is more plastic fueling to this from the factory, but uh, there is some missing here. But mostly it's just a matter of removing the four connectors for the injectors, removing the few bolts that hold the plastic piece down, and some bolts that hold some grounds in place. I will also remove some additional connectors to give me a little slack in the wiring harness because I want to be able to push it as far out of the way as possible. The goal here is to keep the fuel rail intact. I don't want to remove any injectors or anything like that while it's still on the engine. So now that that's all out of the way, the really fun part. Removing the three bolted connections for the fuel rail. Two of them go down into the intake manifold and one goes back into the head that will actually have a nut on it because it is a stud that comes out of the head that is incredibly easy to lose and I've done many times. Also, keep in mind that underneath of the bolts for the intake manifold connection, there are two plastic grommets. You can't see them until you start to remove this fuel rail. So make sure you try and get those things out of there before you go ahead and take the fuel rail off. Or just be super careful when you're taking the rail off because uh, you don't want to drop these things. The, the intake on the KA like wraps down onto itself and causes all sorts of pain and misery if you should drop anything into it. So I'll go ahead and remove the two 12mm bolts and the 12mm nut and place them aside to be lost later. Once you get those out, actually removing the fuel rail can be a little tricky. You kind of need to lift up from the front side, the front side of the engine, towards the back side because of the stud on the back. Uh, yeah, you'll see that I kind of rotate it out of there, but do this slowly and carefully because you don't want to place too much pressure on the ends of these injectors. Uh, even though they're sitting in rubber grommets down the intake manifold, if they're brittle and they will be because of all the heat, it's easy to crack those uh, and then you're going to have a bad day. So here we can see the grommets in the intake manifold. This one doesn't have a rubber grommet in it, probably stayed on the fuel rail. Uh, you can also see the, the plastic grommet I was talking about where the bolt goes. That's to the right. Uh, but inspecting these rubber grommets is really important. If they get dry rotted and cracked, you won't necessarily have a fuel leak, but you'll actually have an intake manifold leak and uh, cause a bad idle. But now I've propped up the fuel rail in a somewhat stable position, still with the fuel lines attached and I'm checking to see if there's any kind of moisture around the plastic of the pintle cover of the injector. This is where you'll be able to see if it's leaking or not. And if you look, it's probably a little hard to see, but on the bottom most injector, you can see fuel already starting to build up around that bottom injector. It's important to note here that this is under fuel pressure. We saw that the fuel was building up around there. You won't really see it unless you have fuel pressure in the rail. And we also take a look at the grommets. Some of them do indeed have some kind of buildup on them, probably fuel that has been leaking on it, and the ethanol doing its awesome gooey things. So let's actually take a look at a fuel rail. I have about five of these guys sitting around because I'm a hoarder, and they're so prone to failure, it's always nice to have spares. It took a long time to really learn a reliable way to get the injectors out of these fuel rails uh, without buying fancy schmancy tools or anything like that. So the first step is obviously to remove the two screws that hold the cap in place. These are under a lot of torque for having a Phillips head. 
If you're lucky, they will come off with just a Phillips head screwdriver. If you're not so lucky, and you probably won't be, don't panic. Don't go stripping it out with your Phillips head screwdriver till the end of the day. The best way I've found to do this is to actually get yourself a pair of really good vice grips and clamp down on the head of the screw so tight that you're probably going to damage the head of the screw a little bit and use those to give you the, the grip you need to just break it free before you start stripping out the head of the screw. And usually you can save it this way. If not, you may have to go crazier and either cut a larger slot into the head of the screw and try and use a big flat head. Uh, you might have to use, try and get a hammer screwdriver, something that you know, will let you apply a lot more force to the head of that screw. So these injectors are super old and crusty and the o-rings have gone bad and all that good stuff, but you'll see that it's still really hard to spin that injector inside the casing, and that usually means that you're going to have a really tough time getting them out. So the first thing I'll do is spray some good penetrating silicone or just something that will get down past the plastic and into those rubber seals. Here's where it gets weird. You're going to want to find an Allen wrench that will fit into the hole on the side of the top of the injector. You'll see what I mean, but yeah, it's not an exact size, there's nothing, you know, Allen sized in there, but you need that angled shape for this to work. So find the closest sized Allen wrench you have to go into the side of there. If you have two, that's even better. Then go ahead and run the two screws back into their holes all the way down just to where they're barely touching. Then you're going to want to properly align the injector to where the holes in the side of it are lined up to those two screw heads. That's going to be really important because the screw heads are going to be your leverage points. Now you can see I'm just putting the short end of the Allen wrench into the hole of the injector and prying outward with the long end with the head of the screw acting as its leverage point. So I'm going to keep working at this side to side, trying not to be too forceful. You don't have to put a lot of force into this. And it should be pretty easy to get it that initial little bit up. When you get that little initial bit up, you can shove some more of your penetrating grease or silicone down into there. Then back out the screws a little bit as you go to give you a higher leverage point, and eventually it should be working its way out. And we'll do the same procedure with injector number four here, which is a little bit more difficult, and they will vary in their difficulty. Uh, it's just a matter of how how crudded up those o-rings and whatnot are in there. Pried it up a little bit, got the screws backed out, and shove a little bit more PB Blaster or your favorite favorite lubricant down into there and keep at it. And there we go, one crummy gummy injector removed. So at this point you would want to replace all of the o-rings on these things before you ever reinstalled them. Uh, even if you were just taking it out to change it out with a different one, always put new o-rings on these when you take them out. If ever you take these out, never try and reinstall them with the old o-rings because once you press them back down into the casing there, they are basically never the same. As of right now, this is where we're going to leave it because the future plans for this car involve putting new injectors in it. So when we get to that point, if I ever get to financing that, we will continue this off with putting new injectors into a fuel rail, which will obviously have new seals and everything like that. So that should fix the fuel leak down problem that uh, I was experiencing. Alrighty, I have a little bit of a plea here. Anybody that has found this channel previous to this video, I want to hear from you. What do you think about this kind of content on the channel? Uh, is it just too out of place or anything like that? It just doesn't interest you? Uh, do you think it's something that should or shouldn't be on the channel is basically what I'm asking. Because I'm... I'm excited about the proposition of possibly doing a full, you know, kind of video documentary series about the rebuilding of this car, uh, but if it's if it's too far, you know, of a stretch to put it on this channel, I'll just make another channel and put it on there. Let me know what you think about it. This car does have a lot to do with Cone Doctor 240. You know, I am an autocrosser, and this is the 240. This is the car that appears in my artwork and stuff like that. Uh, so it is it is very important to me, and it is kind of, in my mind, important to the channel. Uh, but I want to hear you guys' opinion on that. What do you think about this kind of content on the channel? This particular video was probably a little mundane, but 
Uh, it was just something to kind of practice at, something to give me the experience at shooting the video, doing the voiceover work, and, you know, kind of plotting together a, a walkthrough of some sorts, but to make it at least somewhat entertaining and uh, not just a boring instructional video. But whatever it is, you see me next time. I will see you then, and thanks for watching.